it's interesting how if you try to focus on something to the point where you understand everything about it because you love it, there comes a point at which you're so close to it that you can't actually appreciate it at all anymore. And that's a really strange sort of a paradox because you would think that if you love something and you immerse yourself in it, then at some point you become more in love with it than you were before. But that's really not how it actually works. So, for example, and I, I, I've always remembered this because it just stood out to me as a great example of this. There was a study done which showed that people who were surgeons, I believe, were more likely to commit suicide than the rest of the population. And I thought, why would that be? Why would it be that doctors who are extremely well-trained in how to operate on patients, people who understand the human body and the way the mind works, all of these things, probably better than most people. Why would those people also be more likely to commit suicide? And my conclusion, this is just my, my suspicion, but my conclusion on this is that part of it is that when you get so close to anatomy, to the nuts and bolts of how human life works, all of these things, then instead of it being an abstract, a lot more things start to seem like they are maybe mysteries that you have unraveled, right? Like you, you understand how all of the different parts of the body work together to to make you the person that you are. So there isn't really so much of that sense of maybe a spiritual connection. There's more of a rational understanding. And when you have a rational understanding of something, but you you, you understand so much about it that you don't really just appreciate the macro of here's why I think it's cool, then you're so close to the problem that you can't actually really see the thing beyond the problem. You can't see the forest because you're so close to the trees. I think it's that way in game development as well. Like I, I think it's interesting how you'll have a game with bugs in it or some sort of a really obvious UI issue or quality of life issue that just seems like a no-brainer. You're playing this game, you're experiencing a bug or something that's an inconvenience and you, you think to yourself, why, why don't the devs do something about this? You know, why is that not something that they would have seen? Like the first time you loaded into the game and played the game, wouldn't you have seen this and wanted to fix it? Because it's an obvious problem, but it doesn't necessarily work out that way. Because if you're a developer and you've spent a lot of time working on the code to make that game what it is, then at some point, maybe you're so close to it, you just, you're trying to produce something that's functional. You're not seeing it through the lens of the actual player experience because you're so busy trying to create it. It's just not fun. It's like a guy I knew when I was a teenager. I, I would remodel these houses with him. And he was a retired truck driver. And he'd pay me to do drywall and painting and stuff like that. And I remember I once talked to him about this truck driving game. It was probably like the predecessor to American Truck Simulator we have today. But I remember telling him, Look at this game. You could you could drive a truck in a computer game at home. And he said, you know, I, I drove a truck in real life. Why would I 
want to pretend to drive a truck on the computer. Like that's the last thing I'd want to do. And that's kind of kind of sums up the point I'm I'm getting at. When you've done something, when you know all about it, then the wonder, the joy, the excitement of being able to just enjoy the spirit of it fades. Maybe it's that surgeon who knows every single body part by heart, understands how everything works in the field of medicine, but the wonder is gone because maybe somewhere along the line, those things like saying, I feel in my heart a sense of love, well, that just doesn't really ring the same when you scientifically understand all of the ins and outs of how the heart works and you're convinced that love is just a confluence of various chemical impulses right like you don't see it as something special well look at that shoot i should not have uh decided i was gonna fight that spider that was not a good idea you know i uh get so used to killing mobs in eso that don't have any actual strength because of level scaling like there's just not any real risk in the overland I get so used to that then once in a while walk into a actual boss that i'm not uh not ready to to take on because those multi-person mobs are you are something you you do probably need maybe a group to to do anyway Back to what I was saying. If you're so close to something that you understand everything about it, then the mystery goes away. And you lose a sense of wonder. And when you lose that sense of wonder, you lose the entire point of what makes it meaningful to be on that journey at all. So where I'm going with this is that sometimes it's better to kind of have that mile-high view and enjoy the journey but not be so close to anything that you actually make it your main and only thing. You, you allow yourself the, the liberty to kind of pop in and out and really just enjoy the vibe of something and not necessarily make it your, your main and only hobby. You know, it's, it's like the difference between people who play MMOs casually and they just enjoy it like like I run around here and I just do whatever I do in the game maybe once in a while I do a quest and I think wow that's a that's a pretty nice game and then someone else who maybe tries to min max through everything and they're very technical about how they approach the the way the game is meant to be played and then they don't actually enjoy the game because they're too busy nitpicking all the little tiny details and they're just having a miserable time because they're, they're not seeing it through a lens of imagination. They're seeing it through a lens of mastery. Like I was watching a YouTube video. I think it was an Elder Scrolls Online video that just came out, I want to say, about a 10-year anniversary of ESO anyway. It was just a friendly video that had been published by the devs and and somebody said you know the to the community is toxic and and it's terrible and you know somebody was just kind of hating in the comments and i was looking that at that and i was thinking well i i haven't ever had any problems like that seems like eso community is probably about the nicest gaming community uh, that i've ever encountered all things considered and uh you know then somebody else responded in in that same arc of comments in the video that you know oh, i i met my wife in eso and uh you know didn't plan on it to be that way and you know that was an amazing experience and i was thinking like well isn't it interesting how you have all these different experiences people could have like it's the same game right it's the same game for everybody 
but you have one person who's like, wow, this is the most amazing experience of my life, you know, met my spouse in the game, and you have somebody else like, this is a toxic piece of junk game. I just hate it, and I hate the devs and everything about it. Like, okay, same game, two different people. And probably a big part of it is, in, us in most cases, it comes down to what kind of expectations did, did those people go into the game with? And uh, that that really that really plays a, a huge role in the kind of kind of experience you have in the end. So you know, when I was a kid, I thought about things that I wanted to do, and I don't think that this is unusual because I think that all of us, when we we're kids, we had these sort of fancies of what we wanted to do. I wanted to. You know, I was I was raised in a, a religious environment, so at that time I wanted to go be a missionary in Japan. That was something I wanted to do. And there was a time I wanted to be an airline pilot. There was a time that I wanted to be an architect. There was a time when I started to get into politics and stuff like that, and I thought it w I would like to be, you know, some sort of a a larger-than-life revolutionary sort of figure, you know, lead the next great revolution and be part of history, you know. And then time went on, and I started to become more aware of what all of these different things that had interested me in the past actually would in entail, and. In many cases, I probably don't have the personality or the skill set to do some of the things that I would have wanted to do, or thought I wanted to do. But more specifically, I've come to an understanding of, of you know, what those things really are about. And a lot of times, they're not all they're cracked up to be. Like you can say that you want to work your way up in a major corporation so that you can surround yourself with people who are passionate about changing the world. And I would have thought working my way up in a big corporation was an opportunity to participate in global economics and surround myself with passionate business people that were really just in love with that particular profession. Then you work your way up and you start to realize, well, that's not how it is. People are just they're playing politics, you know, people are just trying to polish their ego and make it through another day and collect a paycheck. It doesn't matter what level they're at. So you start to realize even when you get to the place where you wanted to get, there's this toxicity that's there. There's the disingenuous behaviors that people have. There's that tendency for one thing to start to consume your life. And then you're in a position where maybe you're asked to work 80 hours a week so that you can prove loyalty to a corporation that would be happy to replace you instantly if you were gone. And it just starts to become apparent that all of those things, you know, if I wanted to be an airline pilot, well, you know what? It takes a lot of time and it takes money to learn how to be an airline pilot. And when you get there, you know what it's like? It's probably like an office job where you never get to be home. That's really what it is. It's not going to be the wonder of flight like you get from playing flight simulator. That's not it. It includes that part, but the reality is it's so much more. I could enjoy the idea of driving a truck because I love going on road trips. I like that sense of adventure when you pull off the freeway somewhere and you go get some crappy snacks at a fuel station and, you know, enjoy the, the view of seeing a piece of America from a different perspective, maybe. But you know what? driving a truck is like in real life it's it's a it's a job where you're you're never able to to get out of your seat you can't stop when you need to go to the bathroom because your rig isn't going to fit into the average turnoff you know like it's it's all these basic things that are not all that glamorous anymore right like playing american truck simulator is a lot more fun than driving a real truck in real life i'm not saying it couldn't be a fun job 
I'm just saying, when you actually immerse yourself in it and you make it your career, you're probably not going to be looking at it through the rose shaded glasses that you had before you actually did that. Or any number of other things, whatever it is that you thought you wanted to do or be. So where does that leave me? There's all those childhood dreams and ambitions and hopes, and many of them are unrealized. And that's where I'll come full circle and talk more about how as times passed, I've really appreciated being able to immerse myself in fantasy, in games, in books, to be able to read the news and see what's going on, to take an interest in politics, but not necessarily be super fixated on one side or the other, to just be kind of a dabbler, to explore all these different ideas and be open to all the different ideas without being defined by any one of them. I think that that's maybe that's at the core of the appeal of the gaming experience. It's, it's at the it's at the core of maybe what makes people enjoy reading fiction stories and reading books in general, just being all around uh, a person who has a well-rounded interest of a lot of things, but to always keep them at a high enough, light enough perspective that you don't get so anchored to any one of them that you can't actually appreciate the spirit underlying them. Whenever you get tied down in something, at some point you lose yourself in it. You lose the ability to be excited. You lose the ability to be joyful. You lose that perspective. And when you lose that sense of awe, that sense of what's next, that sense of curiosity, and you're just grinding away because that's what you do, and you have that sense that because you're grinding at that one thing, you're never going to have a chance to actually take a step back and enjoy the entire purpose of why you're grinding. Like, it's crazy how what I'm saying here applies to a corporate career. And it also applies to a grind in your favorite MMO. Like, isn't that crazy how those are interchangeable to the point where it doesn't really matter anymore what I'm talking about, whether I'm talking about real life or if I'm talking about a game because they both apply equally. Life is filled with opportunities to grind. But when you define your experience by the grind, you lose the opportunity to be taken in by the wonder and the beauty of life. Life should be filled with a sense of adventure, a sense of not necessarily being entirely sure where you stand on things and being open to exploring new ideas, even if they take you in unexpected directions. Life should be lived with enough freedom to be able to think that something is fascinating and interesting today and then also have time to pivot into something else that might strike your fancy tomorrow and you can have hobbies you can have interests without being so defined by them that you are ranting over small details at a very granular level like, I see videos of people who are ranting about balance changes in, in some sort of a video game or MMO or something, and they'll just be freaking out because, you know, the dubs have made some sort of a change and the game is now ruined and the community is dying and it's the end of the road for this game. 
and I'm sitting there watching the video thinking, well, well, shoot, like I've put a bunch of hours into this game. I don't even know what you're talking about because it makes no difference to me. And then you'll have people complain because the devs don't listen. And why do they not listen? Well, they don't listen because you are 5%. Like your demographic is 5% of the player base. So the devs are listening to the 95% probably. Like that one thing that you're raging about is not actually something that most people are losing sleep over. Like that's the reality. And we see it in professional fields a lot where people who become really aware of how things work will start to freak out because they understand. They understand the nuts and bolts of it so much. Like, you, you know, you, you, you can't just do whatever you want. you got to do it the right way. And everyone else is like, oh, okay. Well, you know, so what? Does it really make that big of a deal? Like, do I have to, you know, am I going to die if I don't wash my vegetables before I eat them? Well, maybe. Maybe if you're one of those people that studies the intricate details that separate organic produce from, or from non-organic produce or whatever. But you know what? I just go to the supermarket and I bag a ba buy a bag of grapes and I eat them because I like them. And that's it. I, I could care less, you know? So maybe I'm doing it wrong, but I'm probably enjoying my experience more because I'm not worried about it. And so, I think it's I think it's just great. Great to be a generalist on some level. To be able to take in a little bit of everything and to just enjoy the fact that there's a lot of interesting things to experience in in the world. And if you don't box yourself in, then you can potentially enjoy everything that interests you in a somewhat casual way while also ta taking it seriously as well. So is it possible to be a serious casual? Is it possible to say, I take this hobby seriously in the sense that it is a real hobby to me, it is a real interest to me, but I'm also casual about it in the sense that it doesn't completely and entirely define my life. I think that finding that balance is a good place to be. And I think it's also worth taking a moment to just talk about how we start our life off with these dreams and hopes and things that we maybe think we'd like to do. And then sometimes life doesn't work out that way. But sometimes it's just because we see through a glass darkly. We look into the future and we don't necessarily know what we're looking at. We, see, we have an idea of what it is we want, but maybe... Maybe we are going to get what we want, but we're going to have those needs fulfilled in a way that's different from what we actually thought it was going to be. It's like maybe Moses leading the children of Israel into the promised land in the Bible story. As it turns out, Moses never got to go into the promised land, but it was generally regarded that he served his purpose because he brought his people there to a land that overflowed with milk and honey. He got them to the gate, right? And he went up on the mountain and he watched as they went in and they began their new adventure. So sometimes maybe, maybe that's the point. Not every adventure is for us to have ourselves. Sometimes our place is just to enjoy having a sense of imagination, to capture a piece of that sense of hope and to pass it on. And maybe we don't actually experience all of those things ourselves, but that doesn't necessarily mean that we can't still appreciate their beauty from a distance. So wherever you find yourself, maybe you, won't, maybe you won't change the world in a big way, but that doesn't mean that in a lot of small and meaningful ways, your life can't still be made better 
by having a sense of imagination and believing in the beauty of your dreams. As always, thanks for watching.